Hello everyone, my name is Natalie Parker and today I'm coming back at it with a walkthrough of example 3 for ZD Plask and if you haven't watched any of my previous videos, welcome! If you need help with any of the installation or understanding of ZD Plaskin, feel free to check out my channel because I have a bunch of videos on ZD Plaskin. Before we get started, I have a few amazing people that I'd like to thank. I want to thank the National Science Foundation and the University of Nebraska-Lincoln for funding my research and providing such an amazing experience despite the coronavirus pandemic. I would also like to thank Dr. Barry Chung and Deepa Chiwerty for their mentorship through this program. So let's get started. My goals for today's video are to download, run, and understand example three. We are working with both constant and non-constant variables today, as well as looking at the assumptions that need to be made for this test. We are working with a data in.dat file for the first time, which is something that we've never seen before. And finally, we're going to analyze and plot all of our data. To find this download for this example, go to the ZD Plaskin website. I have a link in the description. You will find the test under the name External Profile of Electron Density and Electric Field. It's a long name, so I'm just calling it Example 3. Go ahead and download that zip file, and we'll take a look at what we're doing today. So for this case, we are working with an oscillating reduced field in electronic density. We are um, using so many conditions that are non-constant, so it might cause a bit of confusion with the results. The results will come out to be a little bit more difficult to comprehend, and we need to understand why that's happening. We will you put all of our non-constant conditions into the data in file, while all of the conditions that remain constant will go into our user code. Aside from the conditions, we are working with a new element, nitrogen. We will be creating a bunch of different species from nitrogen in these set conditions. So let's take a look at that zip file that you downloaded. After you've extracted, this is what you're going to see. The Mac file is for someone who's working on a Mac. Since I'm on Windows, it's irrelevant to me. Second, we've got our database. I've been over that a couple of times, but if you need help, go check out a video too. Um, the bullsegdb.log has all of those reactions that are being used from our database. And then four is that data in. Um, this has all those non-constant reactions. The dbd0d.f90 is our user code for this example. This has all of our initial densities plus our constant conditions. The connect.inp shows all of our reactions and species for this case. And then uh, number seven is our out.dat file. This has all of the results for our work. So it's a form of checking what we're doing um, while we're still learning the software. Same thing with number eight. It is just a different format of that out file. Um, uh, it's just a different format. Then finally, that brings us to our ZD Plaskin module. This means that we don't need to pre-process anything in this case, but it's always good to practice. In the next example, we will be using it, so it's always a good practice, well, it's always a good habit to have while you're learning. There are a few applications that we need to add for this test. If you go into the ZD Plaskin extra extracted folder, you will find that you need to copy over the preprocessor, the bullsig underscore g.dll, the bullsig underscore g.lab, and the differential equation solver, the devode underscore f90 underscore m.f90. I will also like to add a little reminder that if you want to get QT plastic results, add a little line that is located in the bottom of my slide right here into your user code. If you want to know more about what each of these do, I suggest going to the ZD Plaskin module, which is a great place to look. Or you can go to my video too that will describe each of these components. So once everything's in that file for you, you can go ahead and run it. Type the following, gfortran-o, and then you name it. In my case, I'm using ex3.exe, and then devode underscore f90 underscore m.f90, zdplaskin underscore m.f90, dbd0d.f90, and then bullsig underscore g.dll. And then you'll go ahead and hit enter. The user code will read the data in file, so you won't need to use that here. The exe 3 or the ex3.exe application that you made earlier will now appear in your file. And to open it, you're going to enter in the ex3.exe into your command prompt. This will create all of your Qt Plaskin text files right into your folder. Now to visualize that, we will go ahead and open up, oh, actually, here's that visual for you. That's what I meant to say. If you need help with all of this process, I have all of that earlier in my videos. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at our QT Plaskin results. To open this, go ahead and open that application, go to File, and then Import from Directory. On the left, I've shown a graph for the reduced field. We can see the behavior of this and how it looks just like we put it in our data in file. Then we took a look to the right, and this is a bunch of our nitrogen species. We can see that there are forms that could be trending, but it's still really unpredictable from all the oscillation that we're seeing. From these results, we can see that we need to keep our reduced field constant. 
It causes an error in our results that makes it difficult to understand trends. This test was important to teach us what we need to remain constant. All of our conditions are there for a reason and we need to figure out the best way to run our reaction. I hope that this clears things up for you and gives you a better understanding for this example. If you have any questions or problems, feel free to email me at natdparker22 at gmail.com or you can join our Google group. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one. Bye!